Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Mustard Seed Leadership Podcast. We are on week three of a series called Faithful and Wise Managers, discovering how management and leadership work together to advance the kingdom of God, which I have to confess once again, has really been a challenge for me. This is something new that I'm trying to study and hopefully really grow in. So the key text, as I've mentioned, Luke chapter 12 and verse 42, the Lord answered, who then is the faithful and wise manager? Managers are part of the Bible. It's in scripture. The word manager and steward are the same word. The way we manage is the way we steward the responsibilities given to us. Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants and to give them their food allowance at the proper time? And sometimes management literally means budgets. It means routines and uh, it means rosters. So not necessarily the glamorous things, but the crucial things if we want to be able to enlarge and grow our leadership. So management is about being a good steward, effectively governing a household for order and growth. Now, so far we've looked at two lessons. Number one, management is stewardship, which is a crucial kingdom skill of leadership. Future leadership is determined by current management. And that's the crucial key we have to understand. Remember God said, little by little, I'll give you the land until you can possess what you've already been given. God's not going to keep giving us more if we're not able to steward or manage what he's already given us. Second lesson, the management of our responsibilities is always being held to account and determines our future inheritance. Whether you know it or not, or like it or not, all the time your life is giving an account of your ability to manage. Are you faithful with a little? Are you faithful with worldly wealth? Are you faithful with other people's possessions? Because that's telling the Lord if you are ready to be given more. So lesson number three is that we're going to change tax slightly because a crucial part of management in the kingdom of God is not just managing things, but managing God's call on your life. That's what we're going to look at today. And in 1 Corinthians 4 verses 1 to 5, Paul said this, This then is how you ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with, now that's that same word, those who man, who are managers are. To be entrusted with means to be managers of the mysteries God has revealed. Now, it is required that those who have been given a trust, same word once again. In other words, it's required that those who are managers must prove faithful. I care very little if I'm judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes, he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. Now, the big idea I want us to grab hold today is we don't just manage things, resources. A big part of our management is upon the mission or the call of God upon our lives. Paul was entrusted with a message and he needed as a manager of that message to manage it well and be faithful. It speaks about the call of God upon our lives. We've been given an assignment, gifts, and a specific race to run. And this sacred calling needs to be managed and stewarded well. Just a couple of examples. Uh, take uh, Jeremiah in chapter 1 and verse 10. God says to Jeremiah as a young man, See today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. He has a call of God given to Jeremiah. And from that moment on, he had to manage. He was entrusted with the sacred call and he had to steward that call well. What about the writer of Hebrews in 12 verse 1? It says, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. There it is. It's as if the call of God is your race marked out. Now we've got to manage that call of God in our lives to make sure we get to the end before our lives come to an end. In Ephesians 2 verse 10, it says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. It's almost as if God has lined up these good works and managing the call of God means we steward our lives to fulfill everything he has for us. So it's a huge privilege to be called by God but it does come with a great sense of of responsibility. So practically, let's look at three things out of that passage then. How do we manage the call of God in our lives? Number one, you have to learn to manage expectations. You see, everyone has expectations of you and you have expectations of you, but God also has expectations of you. Now you've got to decide, is it other people's expectations, my expectations, or God's expectations that count the most? 
Paul said it like this, 1 Corinthians 4, 3. I care very little if I'm judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. That's radical thinking. What will short circuit our ability to fulfill God's call is trying to live up to other people's expectations of us rather than God's. Now, I know as a pastor, I think even more so as a pastor's, uh, pastor's wives have all of these expectations. As a pastor's wife, you're supposed to run the ladies' meeting and have everyone for tea and be there for every person to cry on. And sometimes a poor pastor's wife is dying with everyone's expectations, which are not God's. They placed on you by others. We have to decide whose expectations are we going to live up to. Sometimes insecurities, when we're so worried about our own expectations, it ends up putting so much pressure on ourselves. Misplaced expectations on ourselves put so much pressure on ourselves. The only way we can manage it is to bring clarity. God, what are your expectations? What have you called me to do? Which is why it says in 2 Peter 1 verse 10, Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. Manage God's call on your life by managing expectations. You're not going to fulfill everyone's expectations. Let's choose to fulfill God's. Secondly, is then learning to manage your measure of success. Paul said it like this, 1 Corinthians 4 verse 5, Therefore judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. What does success look like? If you're not managing your definition of success, you end up chasing after other things. The speed of growth, income, numbers all become measures of success, but not God's measure of success. I remember when a colleague planted another church and, and I remember his church seemed to grow so fast. I was getting insecure, but then as fast as the church, then it began to de. In other words, we shouldn't be looking at other people's measures of success or the world's measure of success. The kingdom's measure of success is simply obedience to God's call. Once again, the clarity of that call is so important because that's our measure. In John 17 verse 4, Jesus says, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. That's the measure of success. So measure the success of your calling by measuring success and not numbers. And then lastly, managing your motives, which is huge. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 5, Judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what's hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, you'll receive your praise from God. When it comes to the call of God, motives are huge. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 3, you can have the best gifts, but if you don't have love, it counts for nothing. You can have the most power, but without a heart of love, it means nothing. You can give yourself in sacrifice, your, your possessions to the poor, but if it's not done in love, it gets you nothing. Love is a huge, huge motivation. And we've got to manage that. As we ponder, as we pursue the call of God, are we still doing it out of love? And so that's the question I want you to ponder today. Consider the fact that God has a calling upon your life. What does God expect of you versus what you expect of yourself or others expect of you? If obedience to that calling is the measure of success, how successful are you really being? And then are you walking out that calling for the sake of love for Jesus or because of popularity, duty or finances? Let's manage the call of God upon ourselves. As we manage it well, God can enlarge it and add more and more fruitfulness to it. May the Lord bless you. I hope it's helpful. Can't wait to see you again next week. And until then, God bless and bye for now. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Remember, if you'd like the notes that come along with this episode or any one of our past episodes, you can visit outlookchurch.co.za forward slash mustard seed leadership. You can see all our past episodes, all the resources and notes that go along with this. Until next time, keep growing.